continue to your quotient of functions. So quotient of function, you will have there your notation as f over g of x equal to f of x over g of x. Notice, you have to take note on this, you cannot interchange the placement of your function in there. So what do I mean by that? Whatever is found on the top portion or on the numerator part, that will be the same function that is there. And same goes with your denominator as, as well. So you cannot really say that once you have f over g of x, you will have there g of x over f of x. That's wrong because we do not really have a property for your division. So you have to be careful in writing your function notation in there for the quotient of functions. Now, sometimes you will be seeing f over g in there, but that is really uh, similar to what we have at the top. Next, we go for the example. So we have here f of x equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. And a g of x is equal to x plus 1. So we are looking for the quotient of function here. So we are doing f over g of x, which is equal to f of x over g of x. Now, we have to replace your f of x in there by x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then the g of x in there as x plus 1. Now, here is the thing when you do your division. If you cannot find anything that you can cancel out just to reduce your fraction in there, then have it as the final answer. But if you can see that there is something in common between the numerator and denominator, then go ahead and cancel that one. So I hope that's clear. Now upon looking at it, you've got a trinomial in there. And this trinomial is what we call as the perfect square trinomial. Why perfect square trinomial? Because your constant in there contains a perfect square. So if that is the case, more likely your trinomial in there is a perfect square trinomial. But we need to check that one. How do we check that one? We need to multiply your square root of the first term and the third term. And then later on, multiply that by 2. And the result there, if that is found in the middle term, then we have a perfect square trinomial. So we need to say we are getting the square root of your x squared. That will be your x multiplying that 1 to the square root of 1, which is 1, and then always do that, multiply that by 2, that is equal to 2x. So since your 2x is really found on the middle term, that means to say this is our perfect square trinomial. So what will happen if you have a perfect square trinomial? You can actually do the factoring right away that since you have a perfect square trinomial you will be having a factor or factors that would look like this so you have a square root of the first term is x and you will be writing that similarly on the other side as well or the other factor now next since this is a plus so we will have the other factor as containing a positive as well. Now, how do we write the second term of the factors? We are simply taking the square root of your constant in there, which is 1. So square root of 1 is 1. So you will have another number in there that's a plus 1, and the other one is a plus 1. Or you can have it like... Uh, x plus 1 and then raise that 1 to the power of 2. They are the same. Now, why are we writing it like this? Because our aim is really to cancel out something on the numerator and denominator. So looking at that, we can cancel this one and that one. And what is left only is the x plus 1. So we've got here the f over g of x, which is equal to 
x plus 1. So that's quotient of function. Now this is, by the way, a uh, factoring method in here. But you can actually do another method. And again, you are free to choose any method at all. So uh, let's try to find this one in a different, different method. So one method is using a synthetic division. Now take note, synthetic division could not be applied anytime. Now when do we apply the synthetic division? If your divisor is a binomial, that's the only time that you can apply the synthetic division. And also you've got a linear in there, linear equation, okay, or linear function. Now, looking at the g of x in there, this is indeed linear function. So what are we going to do when we do synthetic division? We always have, let me just write this one, by the way, we have f over g of x. This is equal to f of x over g of x. So that you'll have a clear picture of that. When you say f of x, this is x squared plus 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now notice your divisor is linear and also a binomial. So this is now a good one or a good example in the synthetic division. So how do we do the synthetic division? You are going to get your denominator in there and you are equating that to zero. Why are we equating this, that to zero? Because we wanted to look for the value of x. So looking for the value of x, we are going to isolate the x here. So that will be equal to, so we need to say, we are transferring your 1 to the other side. So this becomes now negative 1. So once we have this value of your x, which is found on your denominator in there, we are going to move on for the synthetic division. So how do you do the synthetic division? We are going to draw a house in here. And we are containing in that house the negative 1. And then we are writing numbers in here. The numbers that we are to write in there will be all the numbers on the terms of your numerator, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we'll just get all those numbers. We do not include the variables in there, just only the numbers. You have to make sure that you are following or writing your function in order from highest exponent down to the lowest exponent. So since we are doing that one correctly, we've started with x squared and then down to 2x and 1. So this is now okay. So we are now getting the numbers beside those variables in there. For x squared, we have your 1. For 2x, we have the 2. If that is a negative, you will have to bring the negativity with them. And then we have the 1, which is a constant. So we copy. There you go. And then we draw a line in there. Now, after drawing a line, we are going to start the process. So the process really is, you are to bring down the first number in here. So bringing it down, we have here 1. And then... Once you bring, brought it down, you are going to go back and multiply the one that you brought down to the number inside that house, which is negative 1. So 1 times negative 1, that is negative 1. The negative 1, you are to place that here. Okay. And then after multiplication, we go for addition. So 2 plus negative 1, that is equal to? 1, positive 1. Now, again, we follow the process. We multiply that to the negative 1. So the process really is bring down, multiply, add, bring, and then um, multiply, add, multiply, add. So it's really like that, okay? So here we have your 1 in there. So we are now multiplying that 1 to negative 1. So 1 times negative 1, that is simply 
negative 1, and then we add this is 0. Now, writing the final answer in there, since this is squared, writing the final answer, we are going to decrement the highest exponent by 1. So, meaning, this will become now the 1 there, that will be beside your x to the power of 1, that is simply an x. And then the next one in here, since we have here x to the power of 1, so normally what comes after that one is a constant. And that is a positive, so we have positive 1 in there or a plus 1. The 0 there, this one, the last number in there, that pertains to the remainder. So we don't have a remainder in there. So here we go with our final answer, f over g of x, this is equal to x plus 1 using synthetic division. So I hope it's clear on your part how to do the synthetic division. Next, we go to the next method in which you will be doing the long method of division. So long method of division, this is similar to the numbers. We are going to, uh, let's try to write first the notation. We have f over g of x. This is equal to f of x over g of x. This is what we're looking for. Now replacing, we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. So again, in division, just like ordinary numbers, you are going to place the numerator inside the symbol. So let me just do it here because we don't have that much of space. Because this is, again, long division. So it is expected that we have a long process to go. So what will be inside is your numerator, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1. And what is outside will be your divisor, which is x plus 1 or the denominator in there now doing the long division method for i mean long method of division you are simply doing it one by one so again please recall the process in dividing we have there uh divide multiply subtract bring down divide multiply subtract bring down so that is actually what we are going to follow so we'll start with divide so what to divide we are actually dividing here the first term of your dividend in there or the number inside the symbol and we also have to divide that by the first term of the divisor so this time it's only the first term and the first term so x squared divided by x that will be x because we are simply subtracting your exponent exponents in there on the numerator and denominator when you do division, right? So we have 2 minus 1 is 1, so we have that 1 as an x. Now, according to the process, it's divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. We're done with divide, so we go for multiply. So we multiply your result here, which is x, to the entire thing on the divisor. So it's not only the first term, but you are to do that one for the entire thing. So we need to say we have here x times x, that will be x squared. And then we go for x times 1, that will be plus x in there. Now we go for divide, multiply, subtract. So we are now on subtracting your result so we have here x squared minus x squared that is a zero and then 2x minus x that will be an x and then we do the process divide multiply subtract bring down so this time we are going to do a bring down so bringing down the plus one in there so we have the x plus one and we go for the repetition of the process so once you brought down something you go for it, divide so again, dividing here, we only divide the first term. So first term and the first term of that. So x divided by x, that is simply x to the power of 0 or 1. So we have a 1 in here. And again, multiplying, you will be multiplying that 1 to the entire thing. 
So 1 times x is x. 1 times 1 is simply 1. And subtracting that 1 will be giving off a 0. So final answer in there for the f over g of x, this is simply equal to x plus 1. There you go with 